Got him. No, we got him, we got him. Nice. Oh, beautiful fish. Look at the colors on that. Wow. Your first spike, man. Oh, I just inhaled it down there. Look at the red fins on that fish right there, man. They're gorgeous. Beautiful. They're like a majestic oh, fish. We just got out here. We didn't put the boat in yet. Oh, look at them. Look at them. Almost got me in the dock. And there are so many fish around here. We're going to get out and fish in the boat here, but we're right on the dock here. I love catching them from shore. Beautiful fish. Got them. Beautiful. Got them. Look at that fish. Wow. Welcome to Lake Superior, your first flake, Scotty. Yep. What an amazing fish here. Sucked it in down there. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish, man. Way to get your first, your first flake. First flake, dude. Welcome to the UP, man. Loving it, loving it already. Well, I'm really excited to be here up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. This is where my grandfather's from, my dad. Scotty caught his first flake. We've only been here a couple minutes. Hop in. We're gonna go see if we can catch some more out in the harbor. Peaceful, beautiful. You love it up here or what? Love it, man. Having a All great right. time. Well, let's go see if we can catch a few more. Let's do it. Well, the first spot we're going to start off is, uh, we'll just start down the way here in this little cove. There's a little rock bar, and we'll just check it out. We'll throw some jigs across it and see if the fish are there. Otherwise, we'll just keep moving around and we'll keep looking for these fish. Fish. Yeah, there we Scotty. go. That didn't take too long. Oh no. Wow, look at the colors on that thing. Awesome. You know, we just got in the boat. I made one cast on these splake. I'm hooked up. It's just phenomenal fishing. You just don't get any better than this up here. Oh, under the boat. Wow. They fight. It's just they? going nuts. Gorgeous looking fish though. Oh, they're such a unique fish, man. Oh, he just went through the net, Scotty. Whoa. We seem to have a little bit of an issue here, Scotty. <laughs> we, got, we got the splake that, that went through our net. We must have a do hole a, in the you net. Do here a reverse, we go, we'll net him. Reverse. There we go. <laughs> we got him, buddy, we got him. Uh, <laughs> what a way to start off the day. First awesome, off the man. dock, now your first cast, you catch one. Beautiful, nice job. At this point, you may be wondering what exactly a splake is. This hybrid fish is the result of crossing a male brook trout with a female lake trout. Since it's generally tough to convince trout to cross breed in the wild, the species is a stocked fish. Their growth rate is faster than their parents, which helps them adapt well in cold water lakes. And all we're doing is just moving around here, drop shotting. I'm starting off, never caught him drop shotting before, so I figured. There's a lot of fish. Why not try drop shot? There's a bite. Got him. Got him. Fish on. Nice. You can come up here with your walleye tackle, your bass tackle, your panfish tackle. Oh, there he comes up. Just came off. Throw that right back in there. You know, I've known Eric for several years, and uh, he's one of the best fishermen I know. And I know this is a place close to his heart. He really enjoys sharing that with his friends and, and just showing what the UP has to offer. Fish. Yes, Scotty! Just like that, man. I got one too, Scotty. Doubled yeah, up. I got a little one. Doubled up. Man, this is, never gets old. I'm gonna swing mine in. Oh, I got a little guy here on the got, old drop shot. I think I might need a net on this one. All right, buddy, I'll grab the net for you. Gorgeous little fish. You know, we're using this nano fill and very light baits. You know, tiny jigs, just little hooks, and uh, can really fire that uh, bait out there a good ways with that nano fill. Follow up with a light floral carbon leader, and you're hooked up. Oh yeah, nice job, buddy. It's a beautiful specimen right there. Stay tuned for more splake. Love it. Plus a few other UP species. Last light, got it coming through. When North American Daddy. Fisherman returns. Great fish. Love it. 
North American Fisherman is brought to you by Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. By Triley, Angler's Trust Berkeley Triley, Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. And by Abu Garcia for life. Got him. Got him. Another one on the chicken go. Hooked up again. Eric Hadia is in Michigan's Upper Peninsula fishing Splick in Lake Superior. They are just tearing it up, man. Awesome. That is so much fun. What a unique way to catch a trout. You know, most of the time when I tell people I'm coming to the UP to fish for Splick, they say, what? Boy, you get the fall colors of, you know, of the North Woods, and then you get the fall colors of the Splake up here, and look at that. I mean, Gorgeous. orange, everything's beautiful here in the fall. I mean, Splake's a mix between a brook trout and a lake trout. These are special fish to me, and they're stocked in just a few places. And if you have the opportunity to go and fish for these fish, they are some of the hardest fighting and some of the most beautiful fish you'll ever catch. All right. You know, it's fall time and these splake are coming in to spawn and they're relatively shallow so Eric's using his eyes a lot to scan the water for these fish. There he is on that gulp. You know I just switched over to that little two and a half inch yeah. gulp minnow. Eric's drop shotting it. I just had a little eighth ounce jig and that fish plowed it right there. Nice job. Oh that man. The action has just been crazy. Look at that thing going nuts. There you go. Alright thanks dude. Nice fish. Another beautiful fish from the UP here. Look at how he ate that gulp. All right, buddy. There he is. That one's way out there, Scotty, at the end of my cast. Nice. Another one. Look at the colors of this one, Scott. The orange. Man. You know, it's like no two look the same. They're all I in different know. stages of colors. They're just such a unique looking fish. Oh, it's like, like a little kid fishing all over again, yeah. isn't it? I mean, exactly. That's just, this is why we came up here, man. This is a special place. All right, there he is. Get this guy back over here in the water. Beautiful fish. When you're grabbing these trout, you kind of want to grab them by the tail and always support underneath their belly and try to keep your hands out of their gills if you can. They're a real fragile fish. All right, what I'm using is a pretty simple rig. I use it back home for bass and everything. It's just a standard medium action Fenwick here with a Fluger President bulletproof reel here. Just a three inch gulp on a drop shot rig. I've got it rigged up with six or eight pound fluorocarbon leader, a little sinker here. And all I'm doing is taking it. We're finding rock piles and we're seeing these fish. I'm just throwing it out just like you're fishing for bass. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. Just drop shotting for these trout. Look, dude, there's like 20 of them out there. Incredible. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Got him. Got him. Got him. I'm on two. Yeah, buddy. Unbelievable, Doubled up man. on this lake. Mine's all wrapped up. Oh, mine's right here, about the same whoa, size, whoa, whoa, too. Whoa, 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 whoa. These, are, these are more silver fish. Mine's all wrapped up here. Come here, buddy. The chaos in the boat in the UP. We got mass chaos in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Here comes mine. All Doubled right. up. You know, Scotty, we've caught a whole bunch of fish here. And uh, I, what I'm thinking is maybe go fish one other spot real quick. Sounds good, man. Let's All do right. it. We caught them good here, man. That was fun. Awesome. Well, I just switched to uh, fishing a bobber here. And there it goes. There it goes. Got him. <laughs> here he is. Here he is, Scotty. Oh, it's a good one, dude. It's oh, a big man, one. That's a good one. That's a fish of a lifetime right there, dude. Fish of a lifetime right there. Look at the colors of this fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. There he goes. Just take your time. When you get a big fish on, take your time. Don't rush him on the light tackle. Here he comes. Oh, yeah, we got beautiful. him, man. What a beautiful fish. This is why we came to the UP. Oh, fish yeah. of a lifetime. Beautiful. I mean, really a fish of a lifetime. Look at the colors of that fish. It's like they're painted on there. The orange is incredible. A cross between a male brook trout and a female lake trout, the splake is one of North America's hardest fighting and most beautiful freshwater fish. Hi, I'm Laura Shera. Welcome to North American Fisherman's Clubhouse. Like other trout species, this hybrid can be fairly finicky. Oftentimes, sizing down and patience is the key to a successful day on the water. 
That's when we turn to light lines like four pound fluorocarbon or micro jigs usually used for ice fishing. Tip that with a one inch gulp minnow or fish fry and you have a presentation these flakes can't resist. The North American Fishing Club is designed by anglers for anglers. It provides its members a community of dedicated fishermen who are willing to share the latest in fishing news. North American Fisherman is offering you a chance to fish with our guys. Wow, what a fish! Hey, I'm Eric Hotty with North American Fisherman. Do you want to come up here and fish with me? You can sign up at North American Fisherman's Facebook page or you can go to fishingclub.com to sign up for a contest to fish with myself or Tyler Capella. Hey, it's up to you. All you have to do is enter. Go to fishingclub.com or like us on Facebook for your chance to win. This is North American Fisherman's Field Test, powered by Stuff Stuff. Everything you see here has been tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. If you want the latest in new gear, this is information you can trust. Up first is the AquaView Micro Underwater Camera System, which is the size of a smartphone. The monitor is actually housed in a water-resistant case. Club member Rodney Brewer recommends this product for its great compact size and views of underwater structure. Next, inspired by Bass Pro Mike Iconelli, it's the Ike Dude Spinning Combo, which provides cutting edge design, precision performance, and eye-popping graphics. Club member Michael Austin said that his 11-year-old son loved this rod so much, he would have slept with it had he let him. To learn more about these products or to have your gear field tested, join me at fishingclub.com. Field test, powered by Stuff Stuff. Coming up, what's lurking beneath the surface that threatens to destroy the water you fish? Plus, we've got the hot bites from across the country. This is North American Fishermen. This small Minnesota lake is normally quiet and serene. But today, Two huge machines break the silence during this seasonal ritual. These mechanical harvesters are here to chop through the massive amounts of invasive weeds that are choking this lake. Eurasian water milk oil is a problem that won't go away. It's expensive to keep under control. It can spread from lake to lake like a virus. If you transfer a fragment of milk oil, from one lake to another, you could start a new population. Just a few miles away, Chip Welling from Minnesota's DNR is examining the milfoil in Lake Minnetonka, one of Minnesota's largest of its 10,000 lakes. Eurasian water milfoil was first discovered in this lake in 1987. By 1999, it had spread to 100 other lakes. Today, the wheat grows in over 250 Minnesota lakes. It's a problem that's not only spreading across this state, but the entire continent. This plant can put a lot of stems at the water's surface, and then the stems branch at the surface and form mats. And that's the principal problem that most users associate with Eurasian water milfoil. It'll make a mat on there that you swear you could walk on. Now we gotta chew our way through the weeds, and we're not making it. It's a blanket that if you want to get a boat through it, you have a heck of a hard time. I can't back a boat out through it. This nasty weed is not only a nuisance for boaters and anglers, it's also smothering important native vegetation in thousands of North American lakes. Oh, that we don't know how it got here exactly, but we certainly have evidence that boaters can move the plant. And for that reason, we focus a lot of our efforts on educating boaters and getting them to clean all the plants from their equipment before they leave the lake. No weeds under here. Cleaning, draining, and drying boats every time they come out of the water can prevent this aquatic hitchhiker known as Eurasian water milfoil from infesting even more lakes. As boaters and anglers, you could, without even knowing it, be part of the problem. Instead, become part of the solution in the daily battle against the silent invaders. Are you traveling this weekend or heading out to your favorite fishing spot? Well, here's where the hot bite is right now on North American Fishermen's Border to Border. January is a great time to be down here in the Florida Keys. Let me repeat that. It's a great month to be here, the month of January. 
January, what I like to do in the morning is catch bait near the marina, and then we take about a 20 minute ride back to the Everglades, and we fish the tributaries that flow out from the mainland. When it gets cold, that water's a little bit deeper and it's typically a little bit warmer. Hence the fish pile in there and they're a little easier to target when it's cold. On a typical day, we're gonna catch redfish, black drum, big, big sea trout, and sheep's head. But when we get into these creeks and it's 10, 15 feet deep, there's always a big guy lurking there and we can usually catch him, even in January. Right on, brother. That was nice job. Cool. All right. Every January, typically, this is the warmest place in the country. It's even cold in Los Angeles now. So let me tell you, the Florida Keys, this is a great month to be here, the month of January. Venice, Louisiana, fishing January, catching bull reds on the outside, all these cane breaks that you see out here. Look for speckled trout along the river passes, uh, in the diversion spillways, 20 to 30 foot of water as that river temperature gets down and gets colder. Quarter ounce, three ounce, three eighths ounce jig heads with the uh, gulp shrimp, hopping them off the bottom, catch a fish like this. Each week, Border to Border brings you the latest news on the hottest bites from around the country. For more information, join me on fishingclub.com. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Quebec, providing emotions since 1534. Berkeley Gulf, alive. Looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. By Humminbird, simply, clearly better. Coming up on North American Fisherman, we're going back to the UP for an amazing end of the day. But first, John Haynes, two knots, one winner. Knot Wars is next. Welcome back to Knot Wars. This is the segment where we show you some of the greatest fishing knots so that you can have a successful day on the water. We show you how to tie them, we put them head to head, and we find out which one is stronger. Now on today's segment, we're gonna be showing you two great knots, the Improved Clinch and the World's Fair Knot. But we heard your suggestions from last season, and that was to use lighter line. So we're gonna call this Knot Wars Light, because we're gonna be using three light lines, all from Berkeley. Six pound Trilene 100% fluorocarbon, eight pound Trilene XT, and six pound fire line. Now let's show you how to tie these knots, starting with the improved clinch. Run the tag end through the eye of the hook and make five wraps up the main line. Then insert the tag end through the gap formed between the eye of the hook and the first wrap. Now that's the clinch knot. To make this the improved clinch, finish by passing the tag end through the large loop before moistening and tightening by pulling on both the main line and the tag end. Now that's the improved clinch knot. Now this is a long-standing knot that we've all used for a long time. In fact, our grandparents probably used this knot. But remember, this knot tends to put a lot of stress on the line, so it is crucial that you moisten it before tightening it up. Now let's show you how to tie the world's fair knot. Start by running the tag end through the eye of the hook and run up the main line before doubling back to form a loop. Bring the loop back over the double line and grasp the double line through the loop Run the tag end through the new loop formed by the double line, then bring the tag end back through the third loop created by step three. Final step, moisten before drawing tight. And there's the world's fair knot. Now it might sound tough to tie, but try it a couple times and it'll come pretty easy. Plus it's a great knot for mono as well as 100% fluorocarbon. And if you need a break while you're trying to learn to tie it, eat a corn dog. All right, now we're ready to go head to head the improved clinch versus the world's fair knot. Which one's gonna be stronger? We're about to find out. We've got our trusty Berkeley knot war machine all set up with the improved clinch knot on the right and the world's fair knot on the left. Let's see which one holds up under pressure. There it is. The improved clinch broke first. And the World's Fair Knot is still holding strong, which means it's this week's winner and is gonna move on to next week to face its challenger, the Porter Knot. Now the Porter Knot is not to be confused with the beer. It's an actual fishing knot. So if you wanna learn how to tie either one of these knots, just head on over to our website, fishingclub.com, or better yet, download the Knot War app on your smartphone. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends with a broken knot.
Well, Scotty, we might have spent a little bit too much time catching all those flakes. Yep. It's definitely worth it. Oh, yeah. We're going to try a new lake right now, see if we can get in some big smallies, and maybe some monster crappies. All right, so right now we're on like a deep water crib, but the last hour of light, I'm just going to take this three inch gulp minnow, and we're just going to jig over it. Might get some big crappies, some smallmouth, you never know. We've got it marked here with a marker, we're just going to hover right over it. Fish. Yeah, Scotty. Here we go. Look oh, at that yeah. crappie. Beautiful. Awesome. That's a way to start off the day, Scotty. Check that out. Or finish the day up, I should say. Just catching those flake. Now we're in these crappies, man. Just like that. Looks like another crappie. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, he's not too big. That's a little guy, but that's all right. We found some crappies here. What I really like about coming here and fishing these fall crappies is you can use your electronics. I'm dropping down. I can see the fish right here. Here you can see my bait. Here's a fish coming up after it. Right now I'm gonna lift it up. See me, I'm lifting it up. And there's the crappie right there. There he is. So I mean, using your electronics when you fish deep, that is important. And that's what you can get right there. Beautiful. Nice, healthy, fall crappies. Great eating fish, fun to catch. Panfish, I mean, what a great fish. We were catching some nice crappies, but we were running out of time. So I told Scotty, hey, we've got a little bit of time. Let's just run up and fish some shallow rock. Fish. Fish? Yep. Right behind the boat, eh? Yep. Last light, Scotty coming through. Oh, nice. feels pretty good. Being here with a good friend of mine, being able to see him catch some of his first big smallies in Splake, it was just an awesome experience for me. Beautiful. Nice job, Scotty. Right. There you go. There's a solid smallie. Last light, fatty, nice. great fish. Well, we caught, caught you your first flake. Rushed over here, got some crappie. Yep. And a big smallie. Can't what a great that, day, man. hey? Don't get any better. <laughs>